All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Why Not Me, the web chat series. I hope you have all had a great summer. I know there's some new faces here, people that don't know me or Sarah. So I'll just briefly explain who we are before we get started. Um, Sarah and I are both life coaches and we met in coach training through Martha Beck um, a few years ago. And Sarah helps her clients transform their busy, stressed out, working too hard lives into ones where they can incorporate more rest and play and um, have that sense of joy and freedom. And I help people feel confident so that they can just be themselves and put their gifts out into the world. Um, and we can hardly believe we took the summer off from doing this and we can hardly believe that it's September already, um, but we're getting ready to get back into the swing of things. Um, but speaking of Sarah, she actually had a family emergency um, come up just before the call. So she's hoping that she's gonna be able to join us here in a little bit. Um, before the end of the call anyway. So for those of you who have been here, um, you know a little bit about what we've been doing, but today we actually have a special guest, and this is a person that I met a few years ago um, and became aware of her story. It was back in February of 2013, and it was at a fitness event, in Calgary, Alberta, when I was living out there. I'm now in Nova Scotia on the other coast, but that's irrelevant. Um, and so she was one of the guest speakers. And after the event, I had a chance to sit with a small group of people. I think there was maybe five or six of us. And um, just to sit down and chat with her and kind of hear more about her story. And for me, it was really inspiring. So as Sarah and I were talking about this whole idea of why not me, um, we got thinking about people that we knew or people that we met who had stories that we thought other people should hear. Because, you know, when you're by yourself and you're alone with your thoughts, you can think that things aren't possible for you, that they happen for lucky people or special people or, you know, whatever that makes it possible for them and not you. So today, um, we're going to hear a little bit more about how she got from there to here, quote, unquote. <laughs> um, and I know this is a story that you guys are going to love to hear. So the story includes switching professions, uh, losing weight, getting fit, gaining confidence, um, you know, becoming very successful in her business, meeting the love of her life, um, eliminating debt. And all of this came to her really in the pursuit of helping other people. So that's something that I think is really cool, um, how you can go out and be of service to others and get so much back to yourself. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Team Beach Body Coach, Barbie Kalev. Aww, Welcome. Thank you. thank you, it's so nice to be here. So thank you. I'm excited to share. Great. Well, we think it's really great to have you here to share your story. And we really want to thank you for taking time out of what I'm sure is a very busy schedule um, to be here to talk with us. So for the people on the line who aren't familiar with your story, maybe you could just share a bit of that, you know, kind of where you were, what you did, and kind of where you are now, at, at the way that you see it. 
Yes. Because of course, we can all see it in a different way, but. Yep. Um, a few years ago, I bought this little thing that was like a wooden um, thing with a little bird. And it just asked, where does your story begin? You know, and I, I love that question because we can really, we can pick any point in our story, you know, and I could, I could begin with being six years old. Um, and I will begin there actually, because I think it's, it's really important to see where I've really come from and what has driven me all these years. Um, and one of the questions that I've been asking myself in the past few months is why have I succeeded? You know, why me? So I did ask the question, why not me, but why me? Yeah. And I realized that I had a huge driver, which was to get out of my situation. But I also just had this belief that I could get out of my situation. So I was six years old. I was living in South America in my, I thought it was a perfect little world um, with, you know, a mom and dad and brother with cat. And then all of a sudden, my brother was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. And they told my brother, my mother, that my brother wasn't going to make it. And so my mother refused to accept that verdict. And she took my brother to the United States. And I was born in New York, but we lived in South America. And so my life changed. It was one event that changed the entire course of my life. And so I was separated, you know, from my mom for a long time. And um, it felt like a long time for a child. It was probably only, it was less than a year, but it felt like forever. And when we got to the United States, um, we were on, when I rejoined my mom in the United States, we went on public assistance. We were separated from my dad. He remained back in South America to work. And we were on, you know, on, on welfare. And I just remember the shame that went with that. Hold on, let me close my screen so that it doesn't click every time somebody notifies me something on Facebook. Um, so I, I just went from being middle class, having a happy little family to feeling the shame of being poor. And I just hated that. I hated being, um, feeling that, you know, my mother, seeing my mother use food stamps and feeling like we were poor. Um, and I also remember having to work for recognition. I, you know, my brother got all the attention because he was sick. And so the way for me to get attention was to become this little Excel, exceller, which is not even a word, but that's okay, in school. And so I just wanted the recognition. Like, Barbie, Barbara, and whatever my name was um, back then. It was actually Barbarita, my, my, my Southern American name. And I just worked really, really hard to get recognition. And at the same time, even though I was so young, I knew that I was going to have to work hard to get out of that situation. And now I'm talking about myself in my teens. Like we grew up in a one bedroom apartment where it was just too tight. Like I seriously had half a closet you know, and everything in the house was hand-me-down furniture, hand-me-down clothes. Like, I'm not kidding you that we had Nike sneakers with the, my mother bought them. I remember where we was at Odd Lot, and now I get it. Like, I just had that aha moment right now. The check was on backwards, you know, for the Nike <laughs> sneakers. I get it now. It was called Odd Lot, right? So it was mistakes. And so right. I just hated that. And so I worked really, really hard to be able to get out of that situation. And the only way that I knew how to get out of it was through education. And I just knew that I didn't want to be one of the many, many girls in my neighborhood who, who were pregnant at 14 years old, you know, and I just knew that I wanted something different. And so I worked for it and I worked for it in school. And that's one of the reasons that I got my PhD. I have a PhD from New York University in French literature. And I was convinced that that was going to be my way out, education. And as many of us know, that just because we have a degree, it doesn't guarantee a job. But I was, I was really fortunate, and I got my first job at Southern Methodist University here in Dallas, Texas. And that was when I also came across Beachbody. Um, I was walking down the street one day, 
and I saw my ex-husband and his girlfriend who had lost all this weight. And I was like, oh my God, like, how did she do it? It was beach body. I never intended to have a career change. I never intended to become a full-time team beach body coach. Like this was not the plan that I had for myself, but I did know that I wanted something better and something different. And so I decided to become a coach, a team beach body coach, just to help people. It was never ever with the intention of making a penny. Um, I was actually opposed to that because I grew up with a poverty mentality. I mean, I just really thought it was, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me now, but I thought, you know, it's wrong to help people and make money. You know, you have to help people for free. And that's why I was an educator, right? Not for free, but I was making $56,000 with a PhD. Um, but that wasn't me, you know, rolling in dough. And so I had like, an aha moment when I, when I was reading uh, Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principle. And it was something that he said, something about the business that I'm in. So I'm in network marketing, right? That's helping other people um, with the fitness products and the business opportunity. And he said, you can watch your pennies turn into, into thousands. And I was like, why not me? I actually asked that question, why not me? You know, but that was one thing. And then the second aha moment was that here was an example of a super successful person, Jack Canfield, who was a multimillionaire, who I respected, and that was making an amazing living helping other people. And so that was the model that I needed. So for you to ask me to be on this call is awesome because you, it's great for us, for people to see different examples of different people succeeding in different arenas, because why not you? I mean, you may not know, not you, but anyone listening to the <laughs> call or the recording, right? You may not know what that thing is that's waiting for you out there, but there's something that you can be doing that is going to allow you to really let your gifts shine and why not make money? I mean, you could, you have a choice, right? You can either have a job, make money doing something you don't like or that doesn't fulfill you, or you can freaking do something that you love, you know? And if you're a stay at home mom, because I know I've got one on this call, you know, if you're a stay at home mom, you, you can also do something that is outside of motherhood that can, can be so fulfilling. And, you know, and it's, and it, it's also an issue for women, you know, who, who are stay at home moms, you know, they, they don't have to just define themselves as, as moms, you know? And I think that that's like the dirty little secret that you want something more and it's so okay for you to explore something um, that is, that goes beyond motherhood. And you bring that to your children, which is amazing. Yes, absolutely. And that was actually one of the things that I was going to ask you. Was there a point when you can remember that you believed that you could have it all? You could have your health and you could have wealth and abundance of both of those. And also everything else that goes along with that friends, relationships, really whatever you wanted? Um, I think that there have been many points. So when I started as a coach, I never imagined that, that I would, that I would leave my full-time job and would make the kind of money that I'm making now. It was never in the scope of my vision, right? But I, but I was doing what I loved, right? So that's super important. I was doing what I love. Um, and so I followed it. You know, I remember when I heard, now this won't mean anything to you if you're not a beach body coach, but you know, the first rank, which is like the tiny first little rank advancement, right? I remember seeing somebody else do it and thinking like, oh my God, that's amazing. How did they do it? Like how, you know? And um, I, at that point, I didn't even think like I could do that too, but I was like, wow. And then I did it. And so I did it. And then I was able to see a little further and a little further. What is that Martin Luther King Jr. quote? You don't have to see the whole staircase. Yes. You just have to take the first step. 
And it's the same, that gives me goosebumps because it's the same thing with your vision, you know? So I, I never imagined that I would be making seven figures a freaking year. Like that to me, like to me, six figures a year was amazing you know a hundred thousand dollars a year would have been like a dream then i did that and then i was able to think beyond that you know um i like i said i grew up in a one-bedroom apartment where i didn't even have a closet you know the bathroom door didn't even close like that stuff was i'm not kidding that stuff was traumatizing for me and so to be able to move into my college dorm room was victory for me you know? <laughs> Like at least I had a room and I had, I got to share it with someone, but it was a room that was kind of my own, you know? So then I got my, my own apartment as a college student. And then I had my own apartment in Dallas, you know? And so you just keep going further. Like I couldn't have imagined that I would have what I have right now. But my point is that my poor dog is like trying to get in, but, um, you have to keep expanding your vision, but you do have to have a vision. And so I really want to encourage anyone listening to really just dare to dream, like dream of what you want and, and you know, grab magazines, pictures, drawings, you know, um, like just journal. I mean, I do it too. Here's my, here's my next new dream. I'm not going to tell you about it, but here's my next new dream. And I have a little notebook that says begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end, then stop, you know, but then you don't. And then who wrote that? Lewis Carroll, you don't stop. Then you keep going and you find another dream, you know? And so, you know, every day I'm writing in my journal and I, I write about belief and I just keep expanding my vision and I keep growing and that's the way you do it. So I do want to say something about relationships. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open the door because my dog is crying. Hold on. Okay. Come, come, come. Hey. Come. No, now she won't come in. So that's okay. Okay. She's a little, she's a little baby and she's spoiled. Okay. So I do want to say something about relationships that, um, so I'm divorced and now I'm, I'm now I'm married, but I was, you know, I was, I was single for eight years or not in a relationship, uh, a real one for eight years. And people told me, Barbie, you're so successful. You're never going to be able to find, you know, a good man because, you know, you're, you're too successful. You're too powerful. You're too this, you know? And I refuse to believe that, you know, I, I, what I would tell myself was, if there's if if i'm someone that's good out there in the world and i'm doing good and i'm kind and i'm smart and i'm this and i'm that there must be my equivalent you know there must be someone else that's out there that is available for me and so even though literally i know no one that was actually except maybe tony robbins and you know the self-help guru gurus that were saying you can have what you want <laughs> everyone was saying no you can't it's taken you're to this you're to that I believed that I could and so I did you know and that is key like it doesn't matter if you have all these negative voices that are telling you this doesn't exist that doesn't exist you're too young you're too old you're you know you can't do this because you have kids or you know you, you no like you decide what is possible. And if I had believed that a great relationship was not available to me because I was too successful to this, I would be exactly where I was, you know, four or five years ago. But it was because I believed that it was possible that it became possible. And um, I'm such a uh, proponent of um, advocate of personal development. There was a book that I was reading. It always comes to me in books, right? It was a book that I was reading by... Um, Darren Hardy and it was it's called the compound effect which is not even about relationships and he said that when he was looking for uh, a wife um, he had a list of all the things that he wanted her to be you know mm -hmm. so he made a list of 40 pages and I'm like okay I don't have 40 pages <laughs> you know 40 pages of what he wanted in his ideal wife 
And then he realized that he had to become those things that he wanted. So if you want to attract kind, a kind person, you have to be kind. If you want to attract a loving person, you have to become loving. And so I really took that to heart and I made my list and that it's somewhere that list, but that list, it was like the man materialized in front of me. Like he's everything that I asked for. I mean, everything, maybe like everything from like the color of his hair, the eyes, you know, and just to the qualities about him. But I had to become that person. So you can't just want things and things are not just going to materialize. You really have to become the person that would attract those kinds of things, whether it's success in business or in relationships. I talk a lot, right? No, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, those are the kinds of things that, you know, people want to hear. And that really is, valuable advice because you know people can believe that something's possible but if they don't know how to actually get there then it creates a bit of a struggle so if someone is struggling to believe that they can even do something what would you tell them uh, yeah, and that's the case for many people, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would say find ways to feed your belief. So my way has been through, I mean, I keep saying it over and over and over again, it's personal development, right? So how do you find what you're looking for? So let's say you struggle, like you want to believe what? Give me something, anything, like... Success in, you know, it could be, I mean, what are there? Success in business, success in relationships, acceptance of your body, for example. Okay, let's switch topics. Self-image um, and body image. I mean, that was something that I struggled with too. You know, just I was obsessed with the way I looked. Am I, am I fit enough? Am I thin enough? Am I this? Am I that? You know, and I was just obsessed with it forever. So I bought uh, books by like a book by Marion Williamson, um, Miracle in Weight Loss. And that book really helped me. Um, I just went on amazon.com and I bought books on the topic, you know, and if you look at my iPad, you can see through the years, all the issues <laughs> that I've been able to work through and the books that have helped me. And so finally I went to uh, an event by Tony Robbins and I didn't go for that reason to get help on, you know, my, my body image issues, but it turned out that that's exactly what I got. And the way that it happened was, um, there was an example of a woman who, um, who just was very hardened by life. And if I looked at her, if you looked at her, you wouldn't think, Oh my God, she's so beautiful. No, she was like, you know, just a normal person. She wasn't fat. She wasn't skinny. She was just a normal person, but she was hardened. And Tony Robbins was talking to her and he, and the subject of the day was masculinity and femininity. And we are either in our masculine or our feminine. And so this woman was definitely in her masculine, very hard, very just not in her feminine, not soft. And he said something that got to her heart, that got to her core. And you, I saw this woman's face. I mean, it gives me chills. Transform before my eyes. Like she became feminine and she became beautiful to me. And that's when in that moment, like that makes me cry. Like I realized like it doesn't matter if you're like thin or fat, you know, if like your like beauty truly is in the eye of the beholder because of whatever that you're, you're emanating, you know? And so in that moment, this woman that I thought nothing of became beautiful. And so I realized that, that, that all I needed to be was to be myself and to be in my feminine and not to be thinner or fitter or richer or more successful. And so for me, self-acceptance came in, a light bulb moment but it was me working through all these issues for years you know it was the day that I read that Jack Canfield book you know and it was this continual process of of working on myself you know it's not I think what people think it's like you're gonna go read I tell you you know go read this book 
and it's gonna it's gonna happen to you there. It's that's not the way progress work. That's not the way we develop, right? But we think yeah. that does, and that's the mistake. So if you're struggling with believing in something, you know, believing that you can, you know, you can change your body, you know, that you can you can accept yourself, that you can love yourself, that you can forgive yourself, that you can be successful, that you can make a million dollars or a hundred dollars, whatever it is. You just have to keep feeding your belief and, you know, and, and do your best to apply what you're reading because it's easy to just read a book and say, okay, I'm done, you know, but you have to actually apply. Like I really did apply a lot of what I was learning, you know, and I, I really was sincere in my effort. I wanted to change. And I think that's the key. I wanted to believe I wanted to change and also find, Find people that mentors that believe in you, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in my business, I'm trying to think who believed in me. I mean, I, when I got into it, I was so new and I didn't really have a mentor, but I found a few people in the business that were like, Barbie, you could be a rock star. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. You know, but then also, um, when you don't have mentors, when you are in a negative environment, you know, find the mentors in books and in, yeah, in books and, 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 and videos, and they're out there, you know, and actually, there are groups, I mean, there are groups for everything, right? And there are positive communities, like you can, you can Google my business, and you can find a million negative reviews, all the reasons why my company is horrible, you know, or, as Tony Robbins loves to say, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find, so if you right. look for something positive, so if you want to believe and you want to succeed at being X, Y, and Z, then go look for groups that of where people have done that. Don't be a negative Nelly and look for things to confirm that you can't do it. Cause I see people doing that all the time. That drives me nuts. Yeah. And that actually kind of reminds me of um, Seth Godin has this, uh, expression that living with possibility takes guts yes and I think that oftentimes when people are in that negative fear scarcity lack mentality it, it's because if they lived with what is actually possible <laughs> then, then that's the part that takes guts right saying oh that's not possible for me there's no point in even trying well that's easy right? It's easy not to do that. And it's actually hard to stay committed, keep focused, keep going, especially when, you know, if struggles come up or obstacles or things get in your way, or it's not as easy as you thought it was going to be. Um, so what kind of tools, you know, did you use? Because there had to be obstacles along the way. I mean, like you said, this doesn't happen overnight, right? Um, often people look and they see someone successful and they think, I want to be like that. And they think, you know, it's like you said, you're going to read the book and everything is going to be better. And all the problems that you've had your whole life or things that you're working through beliefs that you've had since you were six, forever. you know, forever. Um, it takes time. So I guess I two things what are the kind of tools that you use during that time and and really how long did it take you would you say i mean obviously everybody's still a work in progress right you're not going to just say oh i'm perfect now and i'm perfect. not um, going to do anything more but right I, I you know i keep quoting tony robbins but i mean it's it's so he's so very much part of my life if you're not yes. growing you're dying mm. um, and growing is not easy you know it's, it's not always easy so you asked me have i had struggles absolutely like i remember i mean i still do i always do you know this is this is all this is living like living is les brown says living is hard life is hard like if you you know and, and with social media we see people's highlight reel you know yes everything's perfect everything's easy no and when you hear about a success story you're hearing about the the moment that they're having that success like even you know 
poor Justin Bieber, like everything that's happening, just, you know, he's so in the spotlight and it must be very difficult to be so rich and famous, so young. But when I saw the documentary um, of Justin Bieber and just his rise to stardom took so much hustle, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's the way it always is. So how long did it take me Okay, so what were, how long did it take me to, there were so many moments, you know, I think, and I was just watching, um, it's a 39 minute video with Tony Robbins and these uh, two marketing gurus. If you Google Tony Robbins and, uh, and belief, there's a 39 minute video that's really worth watching. And it's an, it's an interview with, um, with these two guys. And, um, one of the guys says that when you experience success, right, and it could be small. So I'll give you an example. I have to use my business because that's what I can relate to, right? Um, so when I first started as a coach, I didn't make any money in the beginning. And luckily, I didn't want to make any money in the beginning, I, right? Because I would have been discouraged probably. And so my first paycheck was $29 that came the second month. And the day that I made those $29 were like my happiest moments ever. Like I probably get more excited, got more excited over those $29 in a week than I do getting, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in a week, which is crazy. But that's, and what, what one of the, the guys in that video said was that, um, was that, we, that little moment of success is just a reinforcement of what's possible, you know? And so it's really, really important for you to celebrate the tiny moments of victory and progress wherever you are in your journey. And that's also something that really helped me in my journey with losing weight. I remember when I first started, right? So I was like 25 pounds heavier. I wasn't obese, but I, I wasn't where I wanted to be and I wasn't happy in my body. But when I committed to doing the program and following the nutrition plan, I remember like when I was all said and done, I was still kind of chubby six weeks later. And I just thought like it was the best thing in the world. I lost 14 inches off my body. Like, and other people would, I see it all the time, they would be like, oh, but I'm not where I am today and I'm still like this size. And I was just celebrating and I was screaming on top of the rooftops that what I had done had worked and I wanted to share it with everyone. And so one of the things that has worked for me, that's a, that's a tool if you're looking for tools, was that I was able to celebrate my success. Okay, so celebrate every small success because success, when you, when, if you're waiting to celebrate on when, until you have that like big success, you're, it's never going to happen for you because that's not the way success happens. You know, you just make the, the success stories make a splash, but you don't see everything that has led to that point. And then number two, this is the perfect example. I mean, this is you your your series is why not me so look actively look for examples of people who have done what it is that you want to do right and look for examples of struggle you know like les brown for example he mentors my husband um and he's such a great man. He said, you know, when he wanted to become a motivational speaker, like people laughed at him, you know, and, and, and he, he was able to prove them wrong. Like he grew up, he grew up in an abandoned building and he was adopted and he was labeled retarded. He said, uneducable and mentally retarded. And he was able to prove them wrong. So, you know, look for examples of people who have struggled and there are, I mean, Tony Robbins, he had to live in a car. My husband had to live in a car when he came into this country, you know, and he lived in a car for months. And he tells me about times that like he had to, you know, those little cereal boxes and like he didn't have any money for food and he was in a motel and he took like the ice bucket thing that was plastic and he put his cereal and he drank his cereal with water. And that makes me cry. And then he like sat outside in the staircase and like ate his cereal really slow, trying to figure out like what his next step was. Like, 
you know, and then people see him now like being this successful and being a freaking awesome rock star that he is, you know, <laughs> like he's amazing. Right. But seriously, but they, if they understand like his really real struggles, then they're going to say, you know what? It's okay to struggle. It's all part of the process. And so I guess the third tool is if the first one is what, um, what are, are you keeping notes, Ta Tasha? Because I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I was too busy listening. Well, one of another tool. We'll just say another tool is um, what uh, poop. I just like lost my train of thought. What is one thing that I use when I'm struggling? Is to remind myself that people struggle, and to also, I mean, one of the things that I do is to always keep in mind, it's an actual visual for me of what it is that I want. So when I wanted to lose weight, when I made the decision, because I tried losing weight for many years, you know, up and down, up and down. I was a typical yo-yo person until I found Beachbody. And when I found Beachbody, I remember, I just knew that it was going to work for me. So that's another tip is like, you just have to make a decision that this is going to work for you. That is key. Like you have to decide whatever it is that you want, that you're going to make it happen. It has to be a decision because if you don't make a decision, you're going to find yourself an excuse so that you can get out of it. So I knew that I had made a decision. I knew that I was going to be successful with this uh, fitness program that I was going to lose the weight. And I put no joke, like little sticky notes everywhere on my fridge. I mean, I, when I was doing my beach body program, I had my calendar. I'll look, I even that thing up there, that X, that little square, that's my calendar now. Like I'm still doing the same things that I was doing before. I had a pic pictures of myself when I was thinner on the fridge. I had reminders on my phone. I would put an alarm on my phone that would tell me, you know, go work out because because you're awesome. So these are all, I mean, I don't know, like these are all on, on my phone now. I have a picture of myself and, and my husband. And in the background, I had a picture of my next goal, you know? So you have to be armed. And I really mean armed with tools because you will encounter difficulties. And I still do, you know, I still encounter all sorts of difficulties and I'm always using these tools. So really get rid of this idea that once you become successful, you're not going to encounter any more difficulties because that's, that's, that's a lie, you know, and it's, and it's only through problems that you grow. So embrace them and don't be like, Oh, I have another problem, another issue. No, it's, it's all part of growing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's something that I have to say that I really admire about you. Um, in, in your public self on social media anyway you you share a lot of those moments or you know you show up and you're posting a photo of you without makeup you've just gotten out of bed so it's very humble and very real and people can relate to that right versus this is my perfect life and here's me with my hair done and my makeup and Today I everything is great you. you know mm -hmm. um, which then makes people think I can't have that. Um, but as you were talking about, you know, making a decision, I was like, oh, wow, it just really sounded like you embodied the beach body motto to decide, commit, and succeed. Yep. And I guess that's probably good advice for everyone here that's listening, right? Yes. Even if they just put those three words up <laughs> someplace to remind them every day. Yeah, decide that you're going to change, decide that you are going to make this happen, commit to it. Commitment means that there's no exit. Like you, that's it. It's a commitment. And that's how you're, and then you do the work. Do you have to follow through and that's how you succeed? Right. Yeah. That, that'll go far in anything, any yeah. area. And now, just because you, you mentioned it, and for those people who don't know, do you want to share who your husband is? Oh, sorry. Because for the people that don't know, they'll be like, well, well, who is he and what does he do and what is she talking about? So his name is Sagi Kalev and he's, um, he's one of the celebrity trainers for Beachbody. 
and he's also a clinical nutritionist and he was um so proud of him um and he was one of the, the the world's top fitness models for about seven years so he's from israel he's a professional bodybuilder and he's just amazing yeah so when all of those people were telling you you're too successful you're not gonna meet anybody they probably people thought people are going to be intimidated by you or men would be by your success and you didn't believe that was true and then you know you're following your passion doing what you love and that's how you meet this person i mean i think that could speak to everybody who you know maybe is still looking to meet somebody or hasn't met their big love if you will is to follow what you're passionate about and everything else will just fall into place, really. Yeah, and become- Instead of the seeking, yeah. Right, become the kind of person that, that you would wanna attract, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we met at a Tony Robbins event, and I think that's significant. You know, we didn't meet, we didn't meet at Beachbody. We met right. through a Beachbody friend, but um, we actually met at a Tony Robbins event. And it's mm -hmm. funny because I think had I not had this breakthrough moment of being feminine, um, I don't. I I know that I that we would not be together because if a woman is masculine, she can only attract a feminine man because opposites attract and so Sagi so is obviously very masculine and so yeah he's he I mean he's he's a man he's like a man's man you know and um and right and so I, it's funny because I had asked him the night before the breakthrough I'm like am I masculine or feminine he was like masculine like for sure you know and I was like oh okay and he didn't mean it as a bad thing I was just very dude like you know um so the next day I, I walked in and he turned around. I think I tapped him and I had a coffee and he, I turned around and he went feminine, you know, and <laughs> I felt it, but I felt it. I felt the transformation, you know, mm. but anyway, yeah. It's so cool. That's great. Yeah. I love love. So, um, what do you think looking at your story is the most inspiring part if you had to pick one thing and you didn't know you and you were looking at your life <coughs> um and it's okay to brag yeah, no, I think what I hear people say, and it's actually related to everything that we've been talking about, is with my success, I've become, with, with my increasing success, right, I've become softer and more humble and kinder. And that's what I'm proud of, you know, mm -hmm. because you know, I think you can look at a lot of examples of women who, people in general actually, um, who are super successful, but you can tell that they're not happy, you know? And success, financial success, without emotional fulfillment is, is really kind of empty. And I, I mean, I've also been there too, talking about struggles, and that's another call maybe, but, you know, um, but I realized, yeah, I realized that after achieving a lot of financial success and business success, that there was something really missing. And I had neglected to really nurture my, my soul and to really take care of myself. And, um, and so that's why I turned inward. And I like who I've become. So to me, that's the inspiring part because there are many success stories out there of people who've made a lot of money, you know, and... Mm -hmm you know, that part's overrated. It's, it's the whole package that's not overrated. It's, that's real, you know, just being happy. And I can, I, I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot the past few days. Like, I, why do I post so many articles about um, just 
joy and how to feel joy, how to find joy, how to accept yourself. I, I really do, but it's because I, I really felt like I was seeking for a really long time, you know? And so I post articles that I think will, will help women, you know? Mm -hmm. and guys can look too, you know, but I, I, I just love women so much. Um, and so I really try to, to help by, by sharing articles that I think would have helped me back then, you know? So, but yeah, the formula to happiness is, is, you know, being fulfilled, not just with your business, you know, and, or whatever that is, that thing, your business could be being a mom too, right? Like your job, your role, but it's also just being happy with yourself and being happy with your relationships. And it's a simple thing, but at the same time, it's super complicated, right? Because it's, it's, it's not tangible, you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that kind of is one of those things when people are striving for success, let's say, whatever they define that to be. Um, a good question to ask is, how do you want to feel? Like, what do you think that that success is going to give you? And really, for people to find ways to get that feeling state now, because... Um, when you're in the feeling state already, then it, it makes it easier to attract more of that same feeling state. It's kind of like what you were saying about relationships, to become the person that you want to meet, because then you're more aligned with attracting them. Right. And so a good exercise, if you have no idea what Tasha's talking about, is to actually close your eyes and just imagine visualize yourself if what you want to do is attract you know the right partner or if you're already in a relationship and you want to have an amazing relationship with your spouse boyfriend girlfriend whatever you know see yourself there or having success as a coach or whatever it is that you want to be and actually feel yourself and just feel the feelings feel the sensations see it you know and then just when you open do that every morning and there you are like you're able to elicit that feeling of being in love of being an awesome you know business person and so with that intention and with that state you go out into the world you know and people people can feel that you know as opposed to just you being like I'm so this and I can't do this. Like nobody's going to want to, you know, be, be near you. Yeah, absolutely. So who we know, Tony Robbins, who else inspires you? So many people. Um, so my main ones, let's see, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, these are people that I learn from. Um, I love Oprah. Um, who else? Uh, it just really depends what I'm going through. I was so sad that Wayne, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer died. Mm -hmm. um, I was, and I had just taken out a book, which my dog ate, by the way, um, a beautiful <laughs> book on the power of intention that I had bought a few years ago, and my little puppy just ate the whole thing like just the edges and everything anyway Wayne Dyer um just all these people you know and whatever and some people that I can't even remember their names whatever it is that I'm looking for you know to work on I google it I do my research on it I buy a book on it and I let them inspire me for however long that I need to you know mm -hmm. and then yeah. And then honestly, and I'm not, I don't mean, I don't say this to be cheesy, you know, but really, really my husband does because, um, as a coach, I had become, I feel like I had become jaded. I had been doing it for not even for so long, but it felt like for so long, you know, I would get emails from people like, Barbie, you've changed my life, you know, and, and just really heartfelt and you're this, you're that. And I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, and he was my, my husband who really is impacting millions and, every day he like reads his messages and he feels um just touched you know and he feels like he he knows he's making a difference and so just the way he shows up in his life every single day and truly gives his best and and truly cares about people and wants to make a difference like he's such an amazing role model you know for me and so he re he he's my person that inspires me every single day mm -hmm. That's great. Now, what 
other advice would you give to the people who are listening right now or who are going to be listening to the recording later? What do they need? About to- anything. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> like, don't, you know, don't, if you want something, if you want something, go for it. I mean, don't, don't settle. You can have it. It's it's really just a matter of making that decision and going for it, you know, and not giving up and just deciding you're going to find the way. That's, I mean, it, it all comes, I, I think it all comes, comes down to that. And I think I've said it too, you know, just become the person that you'd, that you'd be proud of, you know? Yeah. Don't, don't do it at the cost of, your integrity. I think that's, that's advice, you know, really just, just be, a, be, a, be a good person, you know, strive to be a good person. Mm-hmm. Don't do things just because they're going to get you this and then it, it will have cost you too much. You know, um, that's really, really important for me now. Like just, I, I want to be a good person, you know, and I, I, I want, my integrity to lead me all the time. And I do, I mean, I really do my best to have that be the case. That's great. Um, What is next for you? Do you have any upcoming things that you'd like to share or events or anything that you would like people to know about? Yeah. So today I was actually, it's so funny because you, you helped me in making that come true. So today we were talking about, you know, the business, like just my, my future doors, like a personal life. And we were talking about dream doors. And so he's like, what do you want for yourself? Like, let's say, you know, if you didn't have to ever do coaching, you know, like you don't even have to worry about your income with coaching or what's happening with coaching. Everything's already set up there, right? Like you, you, you are free to do whatever else you want. Like what would that dream thing be? And I said, it would be me working with young women you know, and, and helping them go from where they are to where they want to be. People who, women who are um, not necessarily lost, but they lack direction and they want that guidance and direction so that they can get to a place of fulfillment, you know, where they're achieving their potential. And so you already helped me do that today. And I hadn't even thought about that. Like I hadn't even thought about what it is that I was participating in today. And so I was like, oh, that is, like I knew we had our call obviously, but I just didn't, I hadn't thought about the connection to the, to the topic, you know, and what it is that we, so that's really cool. So that's, I think that's what's next for me, you know, something related to not, to just giving back and not, um, not being tied to not having that being tied to beach body, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of girls that benefit from that for sure. So thank you. You're welcome. So we only have about five minutes left. I don't know if you want to try to answer someone's question. We, yeah, there aren't many people on the call now, but I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah, sure. If anyone had a question, they can raise their hand. Let's get to questions. This is your... You guys can meet my puppy in the meantime. Do you guys know how to raise your hand? Do you go down to the little... I didn't even um, know you could raise your hand in Zoom. Yes. Or you could, you know, because there's only a few of us on the call. If you even wanted, I can unmute everybody. And... uh, if uh, Jamie or Jolene or Sheila, if you would like to ask a question. Hi, ladies. Que me mencionaron. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> or even just say hi or not. You can mute yourself again. It's totally fine. Everyone's being shy. That's okay. Um, yeah, so I guess that's really it for, for today. Um, I do want to say thank you to Barbie for being here. Thank you so um, much. It was really fun. 
we we really appreciate it and i know that the people who are listening later to the recording will as well and um if anyone wants to know the next call that we're going to have we're going to be um also interviewing someone on october 11 and that is going to be bridget boudreau who is the um, CEO of Martha Beck Incorporated. So you'll be able to learn lots from Bridget about her story as well. Anyway, thank you everyone for being here and we will talk to you next time. Have a good day. Thank you. And I think I forgot to say that I think what you're doing is awesome. So thank you so much. This is, it's, it's really, really cool. And I love that you're inviting different women, you know, to, to, to share their experiences. I think that's great. So you're doing awesome work. Thank you. Thank you, Carvey. Bye, Bye guys. Have a great weekend.